There are many contradictions in Dresden. There are no housing restrictions. Colored and white live side by side as friendly neighbors. No segregation, no colored district. People live where they choose, as they can afford. The children all go to the same schools, play together, mingle freely. Among school children of all ages, there's no sign of any discrimination. They share a fine modern high school, share the school buses, study together. If they continue, well, there will be civil war in Canada and spreading themselves. Yeah, this, will be the, the, the this is the this is the showdown. This this is a pretty uh, uh, general feeling in the town. Do you think? That's the general feeling in the town. We have nothing against and haven't got anything against the colored people. Yeah. They've, they've made a mess in their own nest. Yeah. Do you think they have a lot of support or not? Been backed by the by the uh, people from outside. Yeah. What? Who? Who are these people? Do you do, do you think? Well, there's the, the the colored people from from the, some of the big organizations in the states. There's the communists that are looking for trouble all the time, and there's the Jews uh, behind it. Of the 4,000 people who live in Clinton, more than 3,700 are white. And by tradition and custom, most of them believe in separate schools. In 1950, Negro parents, backed by the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, brought suit against the Anderson County School System, which administers Clinton High School, asking that their children be admitted. The Courier News, the Clinton Weekly, spoke for the community in support of segregation. Editor Horace Wells. Well, any newspaper uh, is inclined to follow the, uh, the thinking of the majority of the people in the community. And this community and, and I myself have uh, favored segregation all down through the years. Uh, back when this lawsuit was filed in 1950, uh, we did everything we could to maintain segregation about trying to provide the Negro students with good, equal, but separate facilities. And that was the way the community felt, and that's the way the community wanted it. And that was the editorial policy of this newspaper. The federal... Then, another voice was heard in Clinton. John Casper, an outsider, a white supremacist, told them that the law need not be obeyed. Our failure to date has been failing to attack. Failing to attack failing to attack at every level and continuously. But we in the White Citizens Council say now, yesterday, today, and forever, as long as there is one living white man in the United States, the Supreme Court is not the law of the land. That decision is not the law of the land now, or it never will be. Never. Yeah. Uh, our school starts at the 1st of September, and all through the month of August, of course, we knew we would have Negro students in school with us when we started, but no one said too much about it, and no one seemed uh, opposed to it violently. And uh, then, I believe it was the Saturday before the Monday that school started, this Casper came into town, and he started calling people up and stopping them on streets and trying to form pickets uh, in front of school for Monday morning. And then Monday morning when we did come to school, we found that there were, oh, 15 to 20 people out there with pickets. And uh, the students, most of them were out watching and everything. Of course, you know, it was something that they'd never seen before. And then when school started and the Negro students were inside, no one was hostile towards them. Everyone seemed to be friendly. All the trouble seemed to be outside the school among the adults and, oh, I'd say six or seven of the students that Casper had persuaded to pick him. Well, uh, of course, you know that things kept adding on top of each other, and pretty soon uh, the National Guard came into town, and of course things quieted down in a hurry then. And then Casper left, and for about a month or a month and a half, everything was quiet. And then this, uh, uh, the local authorities wanted to try Casper on a sedition and inciting a riot, I think it was. And then he came into town for that trial, and uh, then after that, this intimidation within the school that's happened just recently started. What sort of intimidation was it? They'd go down the halls and maybe push a Negro student, or I remember they threw some Negro students' books out into the rain one day, and they poured some ink and uh, eggs down into a 
Negro student's locker, and I think they threw a book at a Negro student in a study hall. Uh, On December 12, he was speaking to a white citizens' council group in a fourth floor loft. The argument simply does not hold that the white race, being a minority, rather being a majority in the United States, should turn over to a group of people only removed from slavery 80 years and only removed from the jungle by a few hundred years, turn over to them the control of our entire civilization. The basis of common law is the custom of the people. And if the custom of the people in Anderson County is to keep the races separate, then the Supreme Court law doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. Uh, the color fellow working with me is one of the most intelligent fellows I've ever met. Well, who is he talking about? The janitor, the maid, he give him any tips on stock, he know what's going on in world problems. It's just been a bit where we say he's intelligent to make up for not letting him go to school. And this is the way we've been doing this. Some of my best friends are colored. Well, this is not true. They don't take their best friend anywhere. They don't take them out on Saturday night. They still enter through the back door, so how could this be a best friend? And a lot of them, they don't even know the best friend's last name, just the first name that they've been calling them by for 40 years. They don't know nothing about his family, nothing about his problems. It's like hell to live up here. Well, the conditions, the housing conditions here is something terrible. The rats, the mice, the roaches. It is very pleasant, I can tell you that. The people want to have something to hold on to, but they have nothing. The salaries are small, the rents are big, and the people just can't get along with anything. That's why you find the people walking the streets trying to do things that they're not illegal and otherwise. We appreciate nice things, you know. We, we really like to have nice things, but we can't afford them. Not on what love we have. We stay in hock from day to day. Just as soon as you get through paying one bill, you owe another. So how, uh, how, are you, how are you going to exist? You see, you, you're a perpetual hawk shop. Water runs down and leaks all over everywhere. From, uh, it comes from the leak and the plastic fair line. All those holes. The big red. And it comes in, up and down that hole on the floor. The bath stool is about falling in the basin. Mm -hmm. I have um, one bedroom in, up there in the front and the kitchen. I pay $64 a month. Why don't you move out? Well, I can't get nowhere to go. Why can't you get anywhere to go? The rent and bank is so high. When you go to an office like that, you had to pay about two, three hundred dollars before you get a, a part. I worked, worked on the farms in North Carolina. Me and my husband, my husband was living. Do you think you are better off now than you are in North Carolina? Yeah. I don't like that man. I get long better up here. These jeering demonstrators of earlier years have now, in many cities, been kept away by the force of an aroused public opinion. But to many of us, even the 1961 progress, 18 students in Dallas, nine in Atlanta, is only token integration. It's new proof to many of us that legal weapons aren't enough, that white law doesn't mean what it says after all. Mr. Muhammad has shown us how integration won't work. Since seven years have passed,
since the Supreme Court issued the desegregation decision, we only have percent compliance with that Supreme con uh, Court law up at, the, up, up at this moment. Six percent in seven years. Less than one percent per year. And these Negro leaders still walking around here thinking the white man is going to bring about integration. <laughs>